Fairly Odd Parents. If you remember watching this cartoon as a kid, you probably remember it being pretty good, right? Well, there's this old saying in the entertainment business that a TV show is only as good as its worst episode. Now, you might be thinking a single bad episode isn't really a good metric to criticize an entire series off of, and you're right. It's actually not, which is why I made this saying up. But do you ever stop and think about why some people talk trash about shows like Game of Thrones, The Office, hell, even SpongeBob? Well, I think it's because even though they're generally really good shows, they all have a couple of stinks towards the end that completely ruin their reputation. And that's what this video is about. The stinkers. It's kind of like when you get a brand new iPhone. At first, it's all amazing and fast and you're super fragile with it. But then by the end of its life cycle, it's super boring and slow and you're whipping that brick around harder than Homelander playing catch. My point is that every TV show has some bad episodes. So I thought it would be a good idea to go over a show that I really, really love and remember being awesome and watch its worst episode of all time. Naturally. Finding the worst Fairly Odd Parents episode is actually pretty easy. One search on IMDb, Reddit, or like even just Google will reveal that season 10 is really when it went downhill. So today we'll be looking at the first episode of season 10, which is often cited as the reason Fairly Odd Parents fell off. Listen, I absolutely love the show as a kid. I've watched every episode, but this will be my first time watching this specific episode. So I would love to know, why does everyone think it's so awful? Is it really that bad? I don't know what to expect. So grab your cardboard cutouts and your Jeff Denham hand puppets, and let's begin watching Fairly Odd Parents. What the fuck? No! I think I know why everyone hates this now. This episode is called The Big Fairy Share Scare. And if you can't tell, it's 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 not good. Our adventure begins with Timmy Turner. He's the main character of the show. I'm assuming everyone knows him. Fun fact, despite being a boy, Timmy Turner is voiced by a woman named Tara Strong. She's great. She's awesome. I just find it funny that if you look up a video of her doing the Timmy voice, it like kind of sounds fake. At least to me it does. I don't know. I just always thought it was a boy as a kid, I, I guess. I don't know. I'm Timmy Turner, and I sure wish Cosmo and Wanda were here. Wait, no, I think! Who cares what you think? You're a girl! Anyway, Timmy's hanging out with Cosmo. Cosmo and Wanda. If you don't know, these are his two fairy godparents. They grant him all the wishes he wants, but they have to disguise themselves as animals or objects to avoid being seen. We wouldn't want some hunchback weirdo with an ear on his neck to find out. That would be horrible. So it turns out Timmy wished for his very own mecha suit that's super smart and knows all the answers to an upcoming quiz or something. So Timmy jumps in and can now watch TV while the robot aces the class for him. That way he doesn't have to do any work. I'm not sure why Timmy even needs to be inside this thing. Like you could have just wished for some AI replica to do everything then like go home and play Fortnite or something. But whatever. He's watching a cartoon, and I'm I'm watching him watch a cartoon. I should also mention here, since it'll be important for later, Wanda is the reasonable and responsible one, and Cosmo is basically an idiot. Skipping to class now, and we meet one of the main antagonists of the entire series, Denzel Crocker, or Mr. Crocker, if you're polite. He's Timmy's school teacher, he's always suspicious of Timmy, and he's officially described on the wiki as a mentally unstable 40-year-old. How relatable, probably. You could have been a doctor, and you could have been a little more patient! Anyway, we find out that today is a special day because there's actually a new student joining the class. The new student's name is Chloe, and we learn that she's a really nice person, like super nice. And turns out she even saved the world from a monster at one point, I guess. The monster had a splinter in his foot and she took it out or something. Don't worry about it. It's a little random. What's clear on this first day is that Crocker really likes Chloe and really hates Timmy. Surely this won't cause any conflict in the future. So not only is she nice, but turns out Chloe is just perfect in every way. So perfect that she just calls the president for no reason. She has gift cards for everyone because she's so generous. She even mentions her exotic animal collection that everyone in class can come see. But then, Timmy must be a really big fan of Neon Genesis Evangelion because just like Shinji's Ava, his mech malfunctions horribly. Timmy doesn't really like Chloe right now because his vibes are just kind of off, but that's okay because Timmy says no matter how much smarter she is than him, he'll always have his fairy god parents, which is something she doesn't have. I've still got something close. Chloe doesn't have my fairies. Oh no, she's gonna get her own fairies, isn't she? Uh, I don't like this. A little later now, and Timmy goes home and finds out that both his mom and dad just, I don't know, love Chloe for some reason. I guess Chloe told both of them about Bitcoin, so now they're rich. Well, you know, at least until the value drops in two weeks. Also, turns out Chloe actually lives right next door. She's Timmy's neighbor now, so we're gonna be seeing a lot of her from now on, which is, yeah. Fucking, yeah, let's go. That's hype, dude. A little later now, and Timmy is still mad. Turns out Cosmo and Wanda both went to one of Chloe's parties earlier, and they both agree that she's an awesome person. But don't worry, because like Timmy states again, he's got fairies, so he'll always be one step ahead of her. I still have one thing she doesn't, and it's the best Oh, Timmy, no. Stop saying that. She's gonna get her own fairies, dude. I 
I know she is. Oh, this guy. All of a sudden, this big boss fairy shows up and lets everyone in the room immediately know that due to an increasingly high demand in fairy godparents and an unfortunate shortage of fairy godparents, Timmy will now have to share Cosmo and Wanda with another kid. I'm gonna kill. I'm assuming for long-term fans, this moment is kind of sad and goes against everything Timmy fought for in the last nine seasons. But fuck it. We're at season 10. We had a good run. Let's ruin our show for no reason. Might as well. I'm not gonna drag this section out like the show does here. It's not really a cliffhanger. The person he has to share Cosmo and Wanda with is Chloe because, you know, obviously it is. So I'm gonna be honest, now it's a little more clear why people really hate this episode, but I'm gonna give it a fair shot because I don't really know Timmy and Chloe's dynamic yet, but obviously a change as drastic as this one feels really different. TV show executives have to understand that people don't want exciting change. We want something we're familiar with and then we want it spoon fed to us forever. That's all we want. Just, just continue doing the same shit we love. That's it. Anyway, Timmy questions why Chloe even needs fairies since her life is perfect. Boss man replies by saying there's a reason for everything. Please stop spamming the group chat with angry emojis. So everyone teleports to Chloe's house to tell her the big news. She obviously freaks out a bit because a six foot seven army veteran with PTSD just spawned in her bedroom. This scene again goes on for a while, but eventually Chloe is pretty hyped about it and then calms down. Sorry, I went a little cray cray there, but I'm good now. Oh, like don't say cray cray. Do not say that. So now it's official. Timmy and Chloe both share Wanda and Cosmo. Chloe is about to make her first wish ever when Timmy jumps in out of spite and wishes to be as far away from Chloe as possible. Cosmo and Wanda oblige and send Timmy to the center of the earth, which turns out is labeled the realm of the hideous mole people. <laughs> How unfortunate. Also, I just want to say that this wish doesn't really make any sense at all. Like first off, they can definitely just send him in space somewhere like galaxies away, but the universe is forever expanding. So I guess that's a tough sell for a cartoon. I understand. But at the very least, they could have done that cartoon thing where they like send him to China or something. You know, the other side of the planet instead of, I don't know, in the center of it. Listen, I got season math. Okay, sure. But I'm pretty sure the diameter of a circle is always longer than its radius. Damn. 11 years I've had this channel, and I finally used the information I learned in math class. I guess it really is useful. Obviously, Timmy doesn't want to f***ing die, so he escapes his journey to the center of the earth, which is a great movie, by the way, but only the one with Brendan Fraser. The gang finally reconnects, and Timmy says that he thought of a good way to compromise. Basically, he's gonna let Chloe pick a day of the week, and she can have the fairies on those days specifically. Honestly, this seems fair. Why not? Chloe says that she wants her fairy godparents on Friday, but it was actually a trap, and Timmy pulls the biggest 300 IQ Sigma gamer move imaginable. He immediately wishes for Friday, Day to not exist. What could go wrong? The gang teleports outside to see a bunch of anti-fairies flying around, causing a bunch of havoc. Timmy and Cosmo wonder how a wish as small as No More Fridays could set off a chain of events like this, which is when Wanda explains that every Friday, the protective wand in Fairyland gets recharged, and that's what's protecting the human world or something. I, I'm not really understanding. I'm gonna be honest. I kind of checked out mentally a couple minutes ago. Excuse me. I'm on duty. Anyway, a bunch of evil fairies are destroying everything now. Doesn't really make sense. Timmy wishes for Fridays to exist again, since I guess that'll stop everything from happening. But before the wish goes through, an evil fairy named Foop appears. Foop tries to kill them with some scorching hot breast milk. Jesus Christ, what happened to the show? <laughs> before anyone can get eliminated, Boss Man randomly shows up and hits Foop with a fatality to stop the chase. He then returns Fridays back into existence, which I want to mention that he does on his own, like without anyone wishing for it. So like, I don't know, why did he wait this long? He should have just done it right away when he knew something was wrong, but whatever. Timmy finally admits defeat and figures there's no way he's going to be able to not share his fairies with Chloe. In his last ditch effort to not be lonely and forgotten forever, he wishes for a fairy robot that'll do all the stuff that he doesn't want to do. That way, if Cosmo and Wanda are with Chloe, at least the robot fairy will keep him company. What a good wish. I can't see anything going wrong. I will give the show props here because this scene actually did get a good chuckle out of me. I wish for a fairy boat that will do all the stuff I don't want to do. Boy, Again. that's a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> Timmy gets sent away, which is when Chloe is finally alone with the fairies. And it's here when she finally decides to make her first wish. You see, she feels bad that Timmy doesn't like sharing, so Chloe decides to do something that she thinks is very generous and wish that everyone in the world shares everything. Everything. That's that's the wish. So the wish comes true, and we get a quick bit where Vicky, she's a bad person, it's not really important right now, gives her chainsaw to f***ing Jason Voorhees. I would probably be laughing more at this if it wasn't so, like, nonsensical. Like, you're either overanalyzing stuff like me, and then this makes no sense, or you're watching this air on TV as a kid and have no idea who this guy is, probably, because you're too young, I'm guessing. It just seems like an out-of-place joke to me, but the Friday the 13th movies do go hard, so I guess I'll give it a gold star. It's not all bad, though, because sharing is caring, and for every chainsaw and deadly pizza there is to share, 
There's a wife that decides to share her beauty routine. That foxy she-devil that lives with us now shared her beauty tips with me. <laughs> the, the parents are goaded, dude. I love the parents. So obviously the town is in complete chaos at this point. Even though the wish said to share everything, it's basically turned into everyone stealing everything, which, you know, is a very different scenario. All of a sudden, everyone's outside now, which is when... Hold up. Is that a Breaking Bad reference? Okay, so stay with me here because this next part is a little stupid and kind of difficult to explain. Timmy wishes to unwish Chloe's wish, but Wanda says that it's against the rules to unwish someone else's wish. So Timmy asks Chloe to unwish her own wish. Chloe is a little bummed out that her wish was absolute trash, so she wishes for her wish to be unwished. But then, as Cosmo and Wanda are about to grant the wish, some guy takes a fire hydrant, which, I'm not kidding, splits the ground in half and allows the mole people from earlier to rise up from their home. This is when the wands needed to grant the wish falls into the abyss obviously. It's at this point in the story when everyone's at their lowest. Everyone's about to get eaten alive. Everyone's very sad. But here's when we find out the truth about Chloe. And before you get your hopes up, the truth isn't that she's not real and won't be sharing the fairies. That part is very true, unfortunately. Now, it turns out Chloe isn't as perfect as you might think. Remember when she saved everyone from that giant monster at the very beginning of the show? Well, it turns out that after she took the splinter out of the monster's foot, she didn't actually save anyone. That just allowed the monster to destroy even more of the city. Her intentions have always been kind, but actually, Chloe screws up most of the interaction she has because she's too nice. What a fun character to add to your show of 152 episodes, man. Really? Do you want to be my friend? Uh, sure. So after Chloe admits everything, Timmy finally apologizes because he figures it's the right thing to do. Also, turns out Chloe is just some girl who probably has crazy ADHD, so... You know, you can't stay mad at her forever. All these feelings don't stop the mole people from attacking, though. So Timmy and Chloe go down into the hole in the ground somehow and then get the wands. They throw them to Cosmo and Wanda, and then Chloe wishes to unwish her previous wish. I'm not saying all that again. She undoes everything. Her new wish finally goes through, and everything seems back to normal. The ending scene is some of the most bait shit I've ever seen, by the way. Chloe tells Timmy that after everything that happened, she's okay with giving up her end of the bargain and just giving the fairies back to Timmy full time. So at first, you're probably thinking this was like a one off episode with Chloe, but no. Timmy decides that he's finally gonna be a nice guy and tells Chloe that he's actually going to share them with her forever. <laughs> What, like, she said you can have them, and then you said, no, you, you can have them too. You were this close, Timmy, okay? Th this close. And that was the worst Fairly Odd Parents episode ever, apparently. So here's the thing. If this was a one-off experience and everything in this episode was just a silly adventure that happened one time, I don't think it was honestly that bad. The problem with this episode is that it changes the formula up too much and it was the first step to change the rest of the series entirely. Up to this point, we were all used to Timmy being silly with Cosmo and Wanda. Sometimes the boys would team up against Wanda. Sometimes everyone would be going through their own thing. But now there's another person involved. And although I think it probably could work if done right, it just doesn't. It feels a little off and a little undeserved, I guess. If you actually watch the show a bunch, you'll know that it felt like Timmy went through a lot of personal stuff with his fairies. And even though he still acts like a dumb kid most of the time, he has matured and learned a lot in the last couple seasons. So to have a character like Chloe come in randomly just feels like the show is backpedaling a bit, I guess. Like Chloe is just a main character now. She's part of the rest of the show. So anyway, that's my two cents. It's honestly not that bad. It's a cartoon. Just enjoy it <laughs> or don't. Doesn't matter. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, check out my playlist. I have a bunch of videos just like this one. It's in the description. You'll love it. Like and comment if you have the time and become a member if you can afford it and want your name on the screen here. Look at the names on screen right now. Wow, isn't that cool? This could be you. Paula Abdul scores this one a solid two wands out of 60, probably. And yeah, thanks for watching.